Good morning, Isa. Good morning. We'd like to welcome you to our service this morning. And those who are wishful with us online, I'm just glad that you're tuning in with us this morning. Let's go to prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come this morning giving thanks for just allowing us to see another day that was not promised. We thank Heavenly Father for the things that you often give to us that we just take for granted. We just want to say thank you this morning, Heavenly Father. On a special prayer for those who are dealing with illness and death and pray that you may visit those homes and visit those hospital beds and visit those uh, families at this time, Heavenly Father, that you may comfort their minds and, and heal their bodies and be a holy will, Heavenly Father. We ask a special prayer for this service and all the services in the Church of Christ, the land and country, everything may be done. Please accept it from your sight. We pray for the message that's about to be delivered, that we pray that it may be beneficial to us all. We may be able to take that word and spread it within the nation, which is what you command us to do. As we go into the rest of the service, ask you to be with us, God us, and protect us. Jesus, let me pray. Amen. Amen.
Jesus, keep me near the cross. Jesus, keep me
Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we just coming out, Father, thank you for all the blessings you give to us. Like most important, Father, we thank you for your son Jesus who died on the cross that we may have a right to a tree of life. Father God, we thank you for sending your son here to die on the sinful cross for the sins of the world, Father. We thank you, Father. Father God, we thank you for waking us up this morning, Father, watching over our land down last night, Father. Father God, we thank you for our very existence at this time right now, Father. We thank you. Father God, we just thank you for all the blessings you've given to us in life, Father. All the things, the little things that we share in life, we take for granted, Father. We thank you for letting us be able to enjoy the, the small minutes of life, Father. We thank you. Father God, we just thank you for blessing us with being able to come to your house, Father, to be able to worship you in spirit and truth, Father. We thank you for this opportunity you've given us, Father, to be on this side of time tonight, Father. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to be able to make it through this year so far, Father. With this pandemic going on, Father, we are still here, Father. We thank you for allowing us to be here, Father. Father God, we ask you to continue to bless us and keep us, Father. Father God, we just come again, Father, and thank you for you. For the leadership of this congregation, Father, we thank you for these men who had the desire for this work, Father. We thank you for them. And Father God, we thank you for their families, Father, who are sharing their husbands to be able to come and work and lead the church in the right direction, Father. Right. Father God, we thank you for the deacons who work alongside them, Father, and we thank their wives, Father, for allowing their husbands to work alongside the elders here at the congregation. And Father God, most important, Father, we thank you for your manservant who labors here, Father, each and every day, Father. Father God, we thank you for his wife who's been by his side, Father. He's been preaching the gospel over 50 years, Father. But we thank you for that, Father. We thank you for his knowledge, his wisdom to be able to teach and preach with the same the Lord, Father. Yes, Father God, we thank you for each and every member here, Father. Those who are faithful, Father, who are faithful to you and faithful to this congregation, Father. We pray that you continue to bless them and bless us, Father. Yes. Father God, we Pray and ask you to bless those who are sick among us. We ask that you may touch and heal their bodies, Father. Yes. Father, we ask that you go into the hospital room wherever they may be, may be, Father, and touch them with your finger of love and raise them up and get them a rich portion of their help and strength, Father. Wow. Father God, once again, just want to say thank you, Father, for allowing us to be here, Father. Yes. Father, we know there's a lot of things going on in this world, Father. We thank you for allowing, keeping us here, Father, and allowing us to be able to go each and every day of our lives, Father. Father God, we just thank you for all the blessings, Father. We, most important, Father, we just can't say thank you enough, Father. You've been so good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves, Father. Father God, we ask you to continue to bless us, Father. Father God, we pray that you be with your man, Savior, and you're about to come to, come to the poor pit and preach what does say to love, Father. We ask that you give him the knowledge and understanding of things that he studied, Father, that he may be able to present to us and to others, even those out in the in the TV land, Father, we ask that they may hear something that not, they have not heard before, Father, that they may come and ask, what must I do to be saved? Come out of the house until the mom's life, but they only baptism, Father. Amen. Father God, we just ask you to bless this world as we go each and every day of our life. Bless us and keep us. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The scripture that serves as the basis of Brother Foster's lesson this morning will come from Proverbs chapter 24, verses 11 through 16. Again, that's Proverbs chapter 24, verses 11 through 16. And the Bible reads, If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain, if thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not, Doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it, and he that keepeth thy soul, doth not he know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his works? My son, eat thou honey, because it is good, and the honeycomb which is sweet to thy taste. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. Lay not wait, a wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. For a, for a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into misery.
mischief. May the Lord have a blessing for the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Amen. 
And so I see some of you coming back and we're so happy that you are coming uh, with this core group and uh, we want to commend your presence today. Uh, we would like to uh, uh, direct our attention to the New King James Version today and uh, we are be coming from that version. But in the meantime, if you would stand on your feet, I know that uh, you close to somebody, but keep your distance and other than other than family members. And repeat after me. We're going to look at uh, some two of the psalms before I read my text today. The first is the hundredth psalm. The hundredth psalm. And uh, we want you to repeat the words after me. Make a joyful noise, Make a joyful noise. unto the Lord. All ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth. To all generations. Now while still standing we'll look at the eighth psalm. Uh, o Lord our Lord. How excellent is thy name in all the earth. Thou hast set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, thou hast ordained praise. Because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mind, that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visit him, thou hast made him. A little lower than the angels. Thou hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Thou gavest him to have dominion over the works of your hands. At the the moon and the stars, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name. We're looking at the Proverbs, and we appreciate uh, Brother Hobbs, our associate minister, for reading this text in a wonderful way. And we appreciate Brother Francisco Barra for directing us through the communion, and he did a wonderful job. And Brother Brown, of course, on the singing, and Brother Hawthorne with such a wonderful prayer. Amen. Now we're looking at Proverbs 24 once again for the sake of repetition or emphasis that it may resonate in our hearts. And we're looking at verses 11 through 16. Deliver those who are drawn toward death and held back those stumbling to the slaughter. 
If you say, surely we did not know this, does not he who weighs the heart consider it? He who keeps your soul, does he not know it? And will he not render to each man according to his deeds? My son, eat honey because it is good, and the honeycomb, which is sweet to your taste, so shall the knowledge of wisdom be to your soul. If you have found it, there is a prospect, and your hope will not be cut off. Do not lie in wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Do not plunder his resting place. For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again. But the wicked shall fall by calamity. The wise sage Solomon speaks in this Proverbs about the value of wisdom. It is more valuable to the soul than honey is to the body. We know honey was a precious commodity. Even John the Baptist wore uh, camel's hair and ate locusts and wild honey. Jesus, when he rose from the dead, said to the disciples who were gathered, he said, children, do you have some meat? And they gave him some raw fish and honeycomb. And so it was David who said in the 119th Psalm 103, Thy word is sweeter than honey to my taste. And so we want to feast on this word today. And the writer is emphasizing wisdom. He had said earlier in the Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7, Wisdom is the principal thing. And uh, therefore get wisdom. Somebody said wisdom is, uh, knowledge is what you know, but wisdom is how you apply what you know. Yeah. And he said, but in all thy getting, get it, understand it. Yeah. And then our pivotal verse from this text is verse number 16. For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again. But the wicked shall fall by calamity. When you are righteous, that means you got God on your side. Yeah. Yeah. And whatever happens, if you have to fall because there are mountain peaks in their valleys, you have to have a valid time experience. God is there to rescue you and to pick you up. So I want to talk on the subject today. You can't keep a good man down. You sisters don't say nothing. Say <laughs> but you can't keep a good man. And uh, this would also be applicable to the women as well. But God said, for a righteous man may fall seven times yeah. and rise again. But the wicked shall fall by calamity. So I'll task today so you will know where we're trying to go. And our lesson name for today's message calls for us to examine the lives of two notable characters and see how their enemies uh, brought them down. But by the providence of God, they were able to rise from their pitfalls by the providence and power of God. Amen. The first was the eleventh son of Jacob by Rachel. His name was Joseph. He was Rachel's firstborn. The Bible says about him in Genesis 30, 22 to 24, these words. Then God remembered Rachel, and God listened to her and opened her womb, and she conceived and bore a son and said, God has taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph. And said, the Lord shall add to me another son. And uh, this, uh, I don't think, was speaking of Benjamin. She had uh, a son that was uh, given to her credit by Bilhah, who was her concubine. And, uh, of course, the concubine to Leah was Zippah. But then, once the concubine would bring forth a baby, then the baby would be given uh, to the uh, credit of the legal wife. 
And in this case, the legal wife would have been Rachel and the concubine was uh, Bilhah. So Joseph had uh, much going for himself. We want to look at it now in that he was his father's favorite. And in the 37th chapter of Genesis, we have much information pertaining to him. The Bible says the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, and that is that Jacob had babies by the two legal wives, which was Leah and Rachel, but then the concubines. And concubine now, for your sake, they couldn't go into the man of the house unless they had permission from the legal wife that they were under. And so, Bilhah and Zephyr. But the Bible says, now Israel loved Jacob, uh, rather just Joseph, more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a tunic or a coat of many colors. Yes. We got to look at that coat because it represented, you see, the oldest son had a right to the double portion of the family estate. But in this case, this was the oldest son of his favorite wife, yes. Rachel. You remember how he worked uh, basically 14 years for Rachel uh, at his uncle Laban's house before he could get it because it was a custom in the land. You couldn't give the younger before the Older, the older had to be given first, so he ended up with Leah. But he loved Rachel, and the Bible says that uh, uh, it, uh, he worked seven more years, and it was as if it was just a few days because of the love that he had for her. And so the coat of many colors, the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zippah uh, had to deal with Joseph, and they were envious of him. You know, you get into trouble sometimes when you have a dysfunctional family. Yeah. They had all that going on in the family. It was a dysfunctional family. But God overlooked uh, all of that polygamy back there because the Bible says in Acts 17 30, and the time of this ignorance, God weeps at it. But now commanded all men everywhere to repent. You see, God in creation created one man for one woman. But because of the hardness of men's hearts, he permitted uh, polygamy to come in. And he winked at it then. But from the beginning it was not so. And so, uh, we had all that infighting going on. But when his brothers saw that their fathers loved him more, every time they looked at that coat of many colors, they realized that Jacob was trying to shift uh, from Reuben, who was the older one by Leah, and give uh, the blessings uh, to Joseph because he loved his mother more than he loved, that is, Joseph's mother more than he loved uh, the, the other. So we find then that to make things even more confound, uh, Joseph was a dreamer. And he told his brothers about his dream in chapter 37, 7 through 9. He had two dreams. And I want you to stay with me now because I'm going somewhere with this. He had two dreams. The first, he dreamed he was out in the field binding sheaves. Now this is grain. And uh, the Bible says this is not four-legged sheep. This is grain. And he was binding sheaves. And as he was binding the sheaves, uh, his brother's sheaves bowed down to his sheaves. And uh, that infuriated him because each one of the dreams had a, a prophetic message. And then of course in the second dream, he said, I saw the sun and the moon and the eleven stars bow down to me. Yeah. What he was saying was that he was going to reign over uh, the family members. And they resented it because he was the youngest. And he was telling the oldest 
that we, I'm going to reign over all of you. I'm going to have dominion over all of you. And that made them more intensified in their hatred to them. You know, we got to watch it in that city of hateration. You know, we don't want to go to that city. I, I made up a word on you there of hateration. Some people are in that city today hating on the folk. But we need to get hate out of the church. Yeah, time is out for this phony skin deep religion. Phony hugs and phony kisses and phony smiles and phony uh, pats on the back and phony grins. You see, we need to be real. Say amen. So they were hating on their brother because of his dreams. And so it happened that the sons left Hebron and they went uh, to Shechem. And they left Shechem and went over to Dothan and, and about 70 miles distance from Hebron where his father was, their father was, which was Jacob. And uh, uh, the older man, Jacob, sent his favorite son, Joseph, to inspect them and see how they were doing. And so he went uh, from Hebron to Shechem and uh, he saw a man in the field and said, have you seen my brothers? And uh, he told him, said, yes, uh, they went to Dothan and uh, he was going there to find them so he could give a report as a good steward to his father. And so he went there and as they saw him coming, they said, here comes that dream. And they conspired against him and said, what are we going to do? We're going to kill him. And uh, we'll put him in this pit. We're going to kill him. But Reuben stood up and said, no, let's not kill him. You can put him in the pit. And uh, then Judah, we want to underscore that because I, I, it will have a great impact on the lesson. Judah was the one who said, no, let us sell him. Let us not kill him because after all, he's our brother. You know, that's significant. When you're dealing with family, as we are in the church, we shouldn't be enemies of each other. Say amen. He's our brother. And so the Bible says that they did decide to put him in a pit. They put him in a well, but there was no water in it. Thank God. And uh, later, the Ishmaelites were coming, also used interchangeably with some Arabian uh, people and uh, the Midianites, and they were coming, going to Egypt, bearing spicy and balm and myrrh to sell down there in the merchant places. And as they came through, uh, they decided, and it was Judah, that we'll sell him. And they sold him for 20 pieces of silver. Don't act this if you don't know this. And they put him in the pit, but then they lifted him up out of the pit and sold him. Now, God wasn't finished with him. Reuben was expecting to come back and deliver him back to his father. But God, in his overall design, had another plan. And this young man had to deal with his destiny. God was going to do something with him to save a nation. And so God, he had to go through some hoops. You see, sometimes when we are dealing with life, God is going to get you way over here in his purpose. But he's not going to give you the details of what you have to go through to get from here to there. And so Joseph didn't know, but uh, the Ishmaelites sold him to an officer of Pharaoh by the name of Potiphar. And he worked in Potiphar's house. And but Potiphar had a wife that had some bad intentions. And she started, can I tell the story? And uh, she started to make some evil advances toward Joseph. And every day it was the same thing. Come and have a, a romantic relationship with me. Can I put it that way? Let me come and let me get close to you. I want to have a, an intimate relationship with you. I, I want to have a sexual relationship with you. And every 
day. And perhaps she had on some lewd like clothes, but uh, Joseph had some deep values and principles that would not allow him to yield. And the Bible says she came after him and she was desperate on one occasion because he was in there doing his office work and Pharaoh Potiphar rather had put all of the affairs of the house under his authority and nothing could go on in that house that wouldn't go through Joseph. But the Bible teaches that this woman wanted to take advantage of him because nobody was in the house but the two of them. So she pressed him. Come on, let's go to bed together. But I'm going to tell you, somebody said, talk to the youth. No, I got to talk to the old folk too. <laughs> Say, yeah, it's not just the youth, it's the old folk too. And uh, you see, you got to watch it because this was a test of temptation. But it was something in Joseph that would not allow him to yield. And the Bible says it well in the Job 31 1. And I'm going to ask you, Brother Hobbs, now to go there. We're going to look at a couple of passages as we move through this territory. Now, the Bible says in Job 31 1, what does the Bible say? I have made a covenant with my eyes. Job said, I made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I look upon a young woman? In other words, he was a married man, and he said, now, why am I going to be looking at a young man, a young woman coming on? I had to talk to my eyes, and I made a covenant. Can you hear him now? Now, eyes, you don't be looking over there, say amen, in the wrong place. He had an agreement with his eyes. It was a compact. And he says, and now, don't want you looking over there, because if you look too long, you might look to loss. Yeah. And when you look to loss to get something that doesn't belong to you, then God is not in it. Because he said in Matthew 5, 28, whosoever looketh at a woman to lust after her hath already committed adultery in his heart. He didn't do it physically, but he did it mentally. Say amen. So, oh Job said, I made a covenant with my eyes. But I notice now another thing as to how Joseph was able to overcome this temptation in chapter 39, verse 9 of Genesis. I want you to walk with me now. In Genesis 39, 9, the Bible says what? 39, 9. I want everybody to get paid. There is no one greater in he this said, house than I. She was pressing him. He said, look at here. There is no one greater in this house than I. Nor has he kept back anything no, from me. Nor has Potiphar kept back anything from me but you. Because you are his wife. Because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness? In other words, he had, you are the exception because you are the wife. And he said, how can I do this great wickedness? And sin against and God. And sin against God. Sometimes you got to get away from the situation. Can I preach in here today? And so the Bible says that uh, she began to come after him and she grabbed his garment, that is, the lower part of his coat, and he came out of his coat. And uh, you're not going to trap me. I'll leave the coat with you. And he ran. And if if I were not all pinned up here, I'd be all over the house now that you all know. You all know that. But he ran and left the cup. And, but he didn't realize he was dealing with a trifling woman. And this woman was waiting on her husband to come home. She was filled with a pack of lies. She said, it was that Hebrew you brought in here. He came in here to mock me. And uh, he was trying to have a sexual relationship with me. You see how she's twisting that thing? And said, and when I well, wouldn't yield, I cried out and so that others would hear. So he'd leave me alone. And he was so uh, 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 controversial about it until he left the court with me. And then she began to tell the things in her mind that and she was wishing he had done that he didn't do and said to her husband, he did this to me and he did that. And it infuriated 
that husband. And he had Joseph and put him down into the inner prison. That is the prison where the official people would work. And this was an official guy working in Potiphar's house. And he put him down in that prison. And the Bible teaches, you see, when God is with you, he can bring you up when you're down. Just like God made a way for him to get out of the pit. Now he went into Potiphar's house. Now he's in prison. And he's down there. And the, in, the prison keeper put all the prisoners under his care. And I'm telling you, it was because he saw that God was with him. Just like Potiphar saw that God was with him and everything uh, in the house was blessed because of Joseph. And so, while it was down there, God was working because he's got to get Joseph somewhere. And he's working with it, but he's got to come through some circumstances. Has God taken you through some circumstances to get you to where he wants you to be? And the Bible teaches that there was a butler and a baker that were officials of the king of the of Potiphar, I mean Pharaoh at one time. And uh, they were in prison and the, uh, the prison keeper, keeper put them under Joseph's care. And each one of them had a dream in the same night and they told Joseph about the dream and the first of course was the butler he said I dreamt and I saw a vine that had three branches and it came out and it blossomed and clustered and, and it produced great uh, grapes and, and then I saw when the grapes were pressed into the cup he said that I was able to uh, give the cup, uh, he said, the cup, uh, the, the service. And he said, I'll tell you what it meant. He said, the dream meant since you saw three branches, in three days, you're going to be restored in your office. And you will serve the king again, he said, and you will serve the wine to the king in three days. He said, but what I want you to do when you get out, just remember me. Don't forget me. Remember me. And uh, then about that time, the baker saw that he was able to interpret that dream. He said, I had a dream. And I had three white baskets on my head. And the one at the top had many baked mints of different kinds of goods and meats and what have you in it. But the birds came down. And they dipped and ate the goods out of the top basket. And old Joseph had to go deep in interpretation. And he said, I'll tell you what it meant. You had three baskets. He said, in three days, he said, you, your head is going to be cut off. And Pharaoh is going to hang you on a tree. And the birds are going to come and eat your flesh. And surely it happened. And after that happened, the butler was before the Pharaoh. And uh, the Pharaoh had a dream. And he saw seven fat cows come up out of the river and fed in a meadow. And then he saw seven lean flesh cattle came up and ate up the seven fat flesh cattle. But they were still lean flesh. He couldn't understand. And, but then the butler remembered how he forgot what Joseph told him to do and mention me before the king. Then he mentioned him. He said there was a Hebrew that when the, uh, the baker and I had dreams, he was able to interpret it. And Pharaoh called him and he said, you saw seven fat cows and seven lean cows. You saw one stalk of corn come up that had seven good ears on it and another stalk that had seven lean ears and the seven lean ears devoured the good ears but then they were still lean. He said, I'll tell you what it meant. It was one dream, two aspects saying the same thing. He said, you're going to have, it's going to be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. In the land. And uh, 
He said, now what you need to do is put a man that is discreet over this. Somebody you can trust. And to lay up the goods in the years of plenty. So when the years of famine comes, you would have plenty. And when the folk come from around the world, they're going to come here to buy corn from you. He said, oh yes, you are a discreet man. I'm going to put you over it. And uh, you will be the vice regent of the land. You will ride in the second chapter. And when the people see you, they're going to have to bow the knee because of your authority. And he put him over everything. And even when the years of famine came, his brothers came out of Canaan, Hebrew, over to Egypt to get grain. They couldn't recognize him. But by this time, and this is where I believe, somebody says that I don't find anything Joseph ever did wrong. I beg to differ with that, you see. Because Joseph, there he was 17 years old when he was sold down into Egypt. And uh, then, of course, when he stood before Pharaoh, he was 30 years old, which meant 13 years passed. Then you had the seven years of, of plenty, which made 20 years. Now he's over in the years of famine, which is 20 plus years. Now he had all that and he could have taken a fast chariot and could have gone over to Canaan and gotten with his family and forgiven them, but he was trying to forget them because of the wrong that they did to him. And when he had his first son by Asenath, and it was a son by the name of Manasseh, and his name meant he's helped me to forget all my troubles. He was trying to put his past behind him, but I'm here to tell you, Use your past as a stepping prop for higher ground. Then he had another son by the name of Ephraim, and it meant God is my helper. And so there he was, and he dealt with all of that, and I'm jumping through some hoops now because I'm going somewhere, and I got to get there within time. So I just want you to know, at the end, when the sons came and asked him to forgive them, he finally reached the point where he could forgive them. And we're going to read these four verses because it may be somebody that we need to forgive. Can you say amen? And uh, the Bible says in the last chapter of the book, which is the 50th chapter, and we'll look at verses 16 through 20 and see what the Bible says there. Brother Hobbs, if you please. So they sent messengers to Joseph. So they sent messengers to Joseph. Saying, saying before your father died, he commanded, saying, before your father died, that would be Jacob, he commanded, saying, Thus you shall say to Joseph. Now you know these boys lied a lot. We don't find what Jacob ever said that. But they were trying to make a case and using their dead father for leverage. You know, the devil is true. Isn't it true? The devil said, your daddy said that you should do this. But then he ignored all of that and then what else does the Bible say? I beg you. I beg you. Please forgive the trespasses of your brothers and their sins. Say, please forgive them how that they put you down in a pit, how that they lied on you, how that they took your coat and dipped it in goat's blood and said a wild beast devoured you. Say, forgive them of all of this. And uh, they are not saying anything, but here it is now. They were the ones that were lying and scheming and deceiving. Say amen. But then the Bible says what else? But they did evil to you. They did evil to you. Now please forgive the trespasses of the servants. Please forgive the trespass of your servants. Of the God of your father. Of the gods of your father. And Joseph wept, then they spoke to him. Joseph began to weep, and they spoke to him. Then his brothers also went and fell down before and his face. And his brothers fell down before him. And they said, And they said, Behold, Behold, we are your servants. We are your servants. Joseph said to them, Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. For I, for am I in the place of God? Am I in the place of God? But as for you, as for you, you meant evil against me. You did this for evil toward me. But God meant it for good. But God did it for good. God was up to something. He knew your schemes and he saw the bigger picture. 
because he knew that he was positioning me to save a nation. Can you say amen? God is a great God. But I've got to move now. And I'm summarizing on the second person. And the second person uh, is that of Jesus Christ. And I want you to know that Joseph was a type of Christ. Because in the, in the uh, if you were using the alphabet in your outline, the A part would be both were firstborn. In Matthew 1 25, the Bible says, and of Mary was born Jesus, who is called a Christ. It didn't say of Mary and Joseph, because Joseph had nothing to do with that. Say amen. This was the virgin birth, but he was the firstborn of the children in their family. And so, and then the B, he was a shepherd, that is Jesus. And I told you, you can't keep a good man down. Somebody said, well, where did you find where he was a good man? Well, in John 10, 11, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Say amen. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And then another comparison. See, Joseph and Jesus' brothers did not believe them. Now in John 7, 5, that is John chapter 7, verse 5. The Bible says, for neither did his brethren believe in him. That is of Jesus. And the deep part, I'm moving now. The prophecies that Joseph would rule his brothers. That is the tribes of Israel. Because out of Jacob then came the, the twelve sons. Who became the ancestors of the progenitors to uh, the twelve tribes of Israel. Now they had ruling power. But God gave Jesus ruling power not over just uh, the tribes, but over the whole world. Now the Bible says in Daniel chapter 7, 13 and 14, Daniel said, and I saw in the night vision, behold, one like the Son of Man came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him, and there was given him dominion, glory, and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom, that which shall uh, stand, not be destroyed. And so God was going to put him, Jesus, over the whole world. But somebody said, do you have something that would uh, resemble when Jesus was on the cross? And one thief was a penitent thief, and the other was rebellious. And uh, you remember how one thief said Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. I want you to go back now in your mind to that prison situation where the two prisoners, the butler and the baker, were in prison. And you remember just like one thief had to uh, fall on his own sword because he didn't believe in God. But there was another thief uh, there, just like there was another prisoner. And he said to Joseph, Joseph said to him, rather, said, when you get out, I want you to remember me. But there was a thief on the cross with Jesus. And he said to Jesus, said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Am I right about it? And so we had that. And then somebody said, do you have something about the cults? And uh, there was the cult uh, of many cults. What about with Jesus? Well, we're going to look at it in Luke 23, 34. Let's take a look there, Brother Hobbs, and see what the Bible has to say. In Luke 23, 34, the Bible says what? Joseph coat and they dipped it in ghost blood 
and they told a lie to the father and said an evil beast has devoured it. Somebody said, well, did you have something like that where Jesus' blood coat was dipped in blood? Hold it, I've got to go back to the word. Back to the Bible I go. I find now in Revelation 19 and verse 11, and we're going to read about three verses, the Bible says that John saw the heaven open and he saw a rider on a white horse and his name was Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. But in the 12th verse he said, in the next verse, he said his eyes were like a flame of fire. And his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew but he himself. And in the 13th verse, he was clothed with a robe that was dipped in blood. Say amen. He was clothed in a robe that was dipped in blood. Just like that coat was dipped in ghost blood. This robe was dipped in blood. And he said, if you want to know his name, it's the word of God. I believe that was talking about Jesus. Because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Everything that was made was made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Can you say amen? amen. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, i got to move on. Both were sold by one of the twelve named Judah. See, Judah was the one that said seven for twenty pieces. But over here with Jesus, it was Judas. Yes. Say amen. I know you can follow me now. He was sold one for 20 pieces and one for 30 pieces of silver. Both had to go down into Egypt. When Jesus was an infant, the angel touched Joseph and said, take the child down to Africa, down to Egypt. And, uh, and uh, he said, when I, I give you word to bring him back to Israel. And uh, I'll let you know, but I got to take uh, Herod out first. Yeah. See, God will take care of your Herod. Yeah. Say amen. Yeah. And he said, but he took him down there. I used to tell people, I said, yeah, he, they, he was fortunate that the black and brown folk didn't kill him down in Egypt. That's in Africa. But he went down there. But God brought him back and brought him to a place that was called Nazareth. And he was called the Nazarene. And so... Now, I'm coming to my clothes now. Joseph was put in a pit. And uh, if that were not enough, he was put in prison. And if that were not enough, but he was put in Potiphar's house. But God brought him through all of his struggles. Because you can't keep a good man down. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know Jesus made a declaration in Matthew 16, 18. He said to Peter, I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What are you saying? I'm going down in the Indian world, but I promise I was going to build my church, and even death will not be able to hold me and keep me from building my church. Death wrestled with it. Somebody said that all evening, on Friday evening, oh, death was holding me. Death had him all day Saturday and late on Saturday night. But early one Sunday morning, he got up. Why? Because he can't keep a good man down. Can you say amen? Somebody said, wait just a minute. How, why couldn't death do it? Because in Acts 2.24, we have a word that I want verse 24 and verse 31. But in 24, Acts chapter 2 and verse 24, the Bible says what for the hearts? Whom God raised up. Whom God raised up. Having to loose the pains of death. And loose the pains of death. Because it was not possible. Because it was not possible. That he should be held. That he should be holding of death. Death couldn't hold him. It had a room on him. But it couldn't hold him. Why? Because you can't keep a good man down. Say amen if you can. And I want you to know, friends, somebody said before you close, can you give us some witnesses who saw him after his resurrection from the grave? So we'll know that the good man got up. That seems to be all right. So the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, I have one and following more brethren. I declare to you the gospel which I preached unto you, 
which also you have received, by which also you stand, and which you will say if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Father, I'm going to you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scripture. And he was seen of Cephas and of the twelve. And after that, he was seen of about 500 brethren at one time. Some have gone to sleep. They're dead, but they saw him. And after that, he was seen of James. He was a relative of Jesus. He was the Lord's brother. If you want to check it out, say amen. And after that, he was seen by all of the apostles. And after that, he said, I want you to know that I even saw him myself. Say, what did you see him, Paul, when I was on the Damascus road? There was a light brighter than the noonday sun, and I heard his voice, and he said, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? It's hard for you to kick against the priest. Say amen if you can. And I saw him myself. Yes, he got up from the grave. But was, was there another witness? Yes, old John saw him in the Revelation chapter 1. He had a long garment that came down to his feet. And the Bible says he had a golden girdle around his waist. And the Bible says his hair was white as wool, as white as snow. And the Bible says his eyes were like flames of fire. And the Bible says he had in his right hand seven stars that represented the seven angels of the seven churches of Asia. Say amen. And the Bible says when John saw him in the vision, he fell down before him as a dead man. But he came and put his right hand on him and said, fear not, John, because I'm the first and the last. I am he that was there. But behold, I'm alive forevermore. Which means you can't keep a good man down. Say amen with him. I know the Bible is right. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible is right. You can't keep a good man down. Yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know in here today, if you're outside of that church that he died for, I mentioned it, Acts 20, 28, take heed therefore unto yourselves and over all the flock over to which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Don't you want to be a, a, a member of that church that's blood bought? The one that's found in the Bible? Yeah. You can be a member today by obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ. Somebody said the church doesn't save. No, it's not to save y'all, but you need to be in the church to be saved. Yeah. Because he's going to come back for the church. And the Bible says in Ephesians 5, uh, 23, For as the husband is the head of the wife, so Christ is the head of the church, and he's the savior of the body. What you going to save, Lord? I'm going to save the body. But what is the body? Colossians 1.18. He's the head of the body of the church, yeah. who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he, Christ, might have the preeminence. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you can't miss it. It's too plain and simple for you to miss it. And you don't have to be a rocket scientist to see the thus said the Lord. The Bible is right. You can come today and be a child of God. Those that are virtually with us and uh, listening by Zoom, I want you to know that we are people of the book here at the East Side Church of Christ. And we preach, we don't preach our own imaginations, but only what we can prove by the word of God. Amen. Because the Bible says in John 12, 48, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, uh, he that rejected me, and receive it not my word, the same shall judge him in the last days. In other words, God is saying it's coming up again. You can't hold it down. It's coming up again. Just like uh, you can't keep a good man down. So you need to be moving on that gospel plan. You have to, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, John 3, 16, God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten Son, whosoever believe it, then it should not perish, but have everlasting life. And not only that, 
But you must not only believe, but you must repent of your sins. Luke 13, 3 and 5, I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. And make the noble confession, Acts 8, 37. The man from Africa, when he saw water, he says, see here is water, what doth hinder me from being baptized? He said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Ladies and gentlemen, that wasn't enough. He had to get down out of the chariot, go down into the water, and be baptized. Why? Because baptism is essential to salvation. You cannot be saved without being baptized into Christ. Faith is the process, and baptism is a part of that faith. And I want you to know that the Bible teaches in Colossians 2.12, bear it with him by baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who raised him from the dead. So it's a process to faith. And baptism is a part of that faith process. And you can't be saved without being baptized. And the Bible says it plain in Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be condemned. What a plain gospel we have. It needs to be preached all over the world. And I say to you here at the east side, whosoever will, let him come. Let us stand this in this song. Oh, my Savior too. Jesus, my heavenly King, loves me, I know. Well, gracious to him, I see. Will the word I do? Oh, and for me to him, I plead. A blessing still flow. Well, I love my Savior too. Sing this song, church.
message this morning about Brother Foster. Again, thank you, Brother Foster, for that message. Can't keep a good man down. Amen. I'm here before you to uh, recognize a prayer request and uh, just remember to lift them up in your daily prayers. Uh, first one is for Brother Johnny Morgan. Uh, he's requesting full prayer, uh, full recovery from the surgery that he had. And uh, prayers for the Morgan family as a whole. Amen. Also have uh, Sister Linda Davis. She's requesting prayers for strength, health, co-worker, and asking prayers on the Jackson, Parker, Johnson, Rockamore, Davis family, and the Eastside family as a whole. She says, asking prayers for my daughter Kimberly Jackson for her health and strength, and that her test results come back okay. Amen. Also, Brother Francisco Rivera is asking prayers for Sister Deborah Rivera to please pray for her. She is not feeling well today, this morning, and asking for the prayers of the church. We have Brother Kenneth Rose requesting prayers for the Reynolds, Taylor, William, Vic, and Alan and Rose family. Also, Sister Melissa Jackson for strength, health, job. Uh, she's asking prayers for the Johnson, Jackson, and Brown families and says, Thanks to God always for my church and continue to bless each and every one of you always. I also have uh, Sister Catherine Davis confessing her sins, asking for prayers on strength, health overall. And she's saying, Church, I have sinned and asked for the forgiveness from God and your continued prayers for strength. I also pray for a successful surgery on November the 4th. Thank you. Let us go to Heavenly Father for prayer. Most gracious and humble God, we come to you just for questioning, Father, that you open up your ears on the ones that was lifted up to you, Father. Touch them in only the way you can, Father. Look out to the ones who are going to proceed and on towards doing procedures, Father. Doctor results, Father. If it be your holy will, let those things come back in their favor, Father. If not, give them the strength to know that you never make a mistake. Heavenly Father, for those who had the opportunity and wanted to make a prayer request but just didn't have a sufficient amount of courage and strength, continue to allow them that time, Father, that they can, once again, be able to ask for your help, your forgiveness, and your strength. Father, as we all Look for you in one way, one form, or one fashion or another. Touch us in a way that only you can. Continue to strengthen the leadership of the church, and especially the preacher, him and his family. Let them live a long, healthy, and strong life, and be on the battlefield for you. In your son Jesus' name, amen. amen. I'm also here before you uh, for the announcements. We do have one visitor, Mr. Joe Noel. Uh, Mr. Noel, just wave your hands over there real quick for us. He's in the back, so thank you for visiting with us. Uh, just a quick reminder on uh, our sick and shutting list. Remember to try to call and keep in contact with them, those who have uh, been out for a while. There are just a few names, Sister Nellie Jackson, Mr. Nellie Jones, Brother Floyd Wafer, uh, Makisha Range, Brother Strange, uh, Brother Wilbur Walker, uh, Brother Roy Hutchins, Sister Irene, Horton, uh, and also Clay Jackson, Don Jackson, and Dorothy Hart. Uh, we have, uh, coming up on the 31st, we're going to do a, a drive through trunk retreat on Saturday, October 31st, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, it says we need volunteers for the following help and stuff the bags on October the 29th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, help decorate the awning area October 31st, bring and decorate call around 6.30 p.m. on October the 31st. Trunk or Treat begins around 7 p.m. through 9 p.m. And the main thing, help clean up decorations. For those who want to be volunteering, please. Uh, if you want to volunteer, please contact Sister Batista Butler, 469-387-7236. Uh, you can text or call her. And for those who uh, always like to go see it in their schedule, uh, Southwest Christian College, uh, they still have the lectureship going on the 21st through the 25th. But uh, due to the coronavirus, the lectureship will be virtual.
virtual this year. As a result of the virtual agenda, many of you who usually are not able to attend will be able to attend. You don't want to miss the 2020 Southwest Christian College Lectureship. Save the dates. Also, the theme will be flexibility is the key, the theme that is constantly in change. Brother Richard Barclay will be the lectureship leader. These are the announcements I have. Please secure a vote for anything else in the neighborhood. Thank you. Opportunity at this time to give some uh, commendations to uh, three people in particular uh, Sister Batista and her mother, Sister Nelson. I tell you, they're just working overtime and, and all these programs, you'll see them working together and it's a beautiful thing. And then Brother Butler usually is right in there and her husband, wow, I just love to see that. Amen. And, and then uh, Brother David Woods is the elder in charge of these uh, recent programs, uh, feeding the outreach program and so on. And then with the program coming up, the trumpet street and all that, he directs that. And I've been observing him. You know, he, 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 he's not a man of a whole lot of words. He's a man of great action. And I want to commend him. And he was sharing with me how there's so many people laid off on his job but uh, he's still there, which tells me that uh, God is with him. And it's just good to know him. He's one of the elders here at the Eastside Church of Christ. Before Dear Heavenly Fathers, once again, we thank you for another uh, day of worship. And Father, we pray that the things that was read and said was done with your approval and with your blessing. Yeah. And Father, we give you all the glory and all the praise. Amen. Father, we leave this place to go to our different homes. We pray that her home and danger come with any of us. These and other blessings we ask in your dear son, Jesus' name, we do pray. Let the church say, Amen. 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 Please I lost my turn to talk. They say it, dude. I ain't the worst I can do. I do it all the time. I do it all the time.